Hello everyone, welcome to the show. It is my pleasure to introduce Cheryl Crawford, who is the Executive Director of MassVote. Today she'll be discussing the mission of the organization and many initiatives that they have in the works to educate and empower the voting population. The organization is pretty much it in terms of at the center of public policy and elections. So it's not just one of those things where you talk about only during presidential election, but if anything local is going on or around the state, mass vote is the place well, to really get all the information and everything. So today's the big day to introduce you to our viewers, but also talk about what you guys have been up to with great. the Boston election. Wonderful. Great. Again, thank you, Marie, for having us. Um, we love to talk about it. It's our favorite topic oh, to day. talk about elections yes. and election reform. So MassVote is a nonpartisan, nonprofit voting rights issue advocacy mm -hmm. organization. And we typically work in communities that are underrepresented, uh, communities of color, low income, women, mm -hmm. new citizens. I mean, just helping them to understand what their rights are around voting. Um, basically, we run several programs. Our main program is the Democracy for Nonprofits. Oh, great. Yeah, that program, we, um, we let them know what they can and cannot do as a 501c3. You know, we never one. endorse. I know, <laughs> yeah. right? We okay. never endorse. Neutral. Absolutely. Yeah. But we absolutely can get involved in ballot initiatives and things of that nature. Okay. And out of that is a, a program called Civic Engagement Initiative. We have about 13 groups that we absolutely monitor okay. the activity that they're doing in the community. Locally. Locally. Okay. They do grassroots organizing, Dorchester, Roxbury, Mattapan, um, Chelsea. And we work out, we're, we're actually a statewide organization. Okay. We work in Lawrence and Lowell, Brockton, oh, Randolph, <laughs> Springfield, good. Worcester, oh you know. God. But it's really around yeah. getting people out to vote. Mm -hmm. Civic engagement initiative. Um, these um, organizations do grassroots organizing, right. door knocking, phone I banking. Know. I remember those things. Days. Of that. And yeah, <laughs> because absolutely. I mean, I think what I love about it is the fact that it's about education and empowerment. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of time, I like the approach of talking about issues versus talking about parties or having people choose a side, for example, mm -hmm. because whoever's in office, like you want them to work on your issues and you want them to prioritize what's going on in our communities as a whole. Um, and so a lot of time it's really hard when you're watching, it seems like there's so much division versus focusing on the issues, issues before exactly, it's dealing with. The issues that are really plaguing our community. Yeah. And that's something, you know, we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. The election's over, right. we're down to the final two candidates. Um, we really need to know where they stand on the issues that are really plaguing our community. So what have you heard from people? Because um, I know me personally, I wasn't, my candidate did not mm -hmm. make it to the final two. And so a lot of, I was hearing a lot of things about people saying the race wasn't exciting and the turnout must have been disappointed in terms of all the work that I know you do and your partners do in the community. Like, what did you think about the turnout and the outcome of the well, election? It was very disappointing, really. And I am very, I'm more disappointed with the fact that it was such a low yeah. turnout, 30.75% yeah. came out just under 31%. You would have thought with uh, 12 candidates, know, mayoral so candidates, yeah. 19 at-large candidates, right. that we would have had more we'll of a turnout, but we actually didn't. Um, what I'm hearing from the community, from some folk are, they were all totally overwhelmed with that many candidates yeah. on the ballot didn't know who to vote for um so you know and it was difficult really getting um everybody's point of view out so when we did forums right we have a minute to, and a half or yeah. two minutes to answer a question to exactly yeah. exactly we're going to do a better job this right time now with this two. time with two <laughs> it's a little easier with two people it is it but, is but you know also the other thing i heard was the fact that as a community at large, we mm -hmm. were not able to rally around one candidate. I mean, it was sort of like an interesting position to be in because typically we want people to run mm -hmm. and people are not running. And this time it's almost like we have so many that came out and ran. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the numbers. I'm not a big quantitative person when it comes to those issues, but you look at the numbers and you realize just what if this person, you know, I mean, you want people to run, but do you feel like we weren't able to really come out and sort of get, I mean, I was disappointed to the fact that I think 20 or 30 years ago, we went through this with Mel King. Mm -hmm. I wasn't 
I was still I young, was a baby. Then. <laughs> I was like, without telling my age. And for us to not be able, I really thought the race was going to be an historic moment. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. It's almost like the same old happens. Even though one of the things I said was the fact that all the candidates, like there weren't one where I felt like I'm going to say something bad about because they were all had good platform. Not to me. You know? But... But on the surface, like when you're just <laughs> reading what what people are exposed to, like because you're behind the scene, we know more than mm-hmm. what's being presented Absolutely. as a whole. Absolutely. But to most of them, to someone who just read their platform, go to the website, it's hard to kind of poke holes and say this one is really not oh he cracks up or well we only have one female she cracks up to be. Exactly. You know what I mean? So Exactly. I don't know how we can use that campaign or that election as a lesson for what may come down the line well you know it's really interesting because all these people were not running Mm -hmm. until mayor menino said he wasn't running yeah so that's a whole nother story but then we had you know and we always want to encourage people to run however i i just think that some folks shouldn't have ran Mm -hmm. you know some folks just should not have ran because they don't have the platform and they, if they wanted to run an issues campaign, that's right. something totally right. different to bring issues to light. And they should have done that. But in terms of, you know, circling the wagons around, it's because who do you ask not to run, right. first of all? Right. There's nobody yeah. you can actually say. I mean, usually we're chasing run. people to run. We're like pushing exactly. people like, oh, go run. And, but now we had the people Come running. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it's just a matter of, well, what reason are you running? Right. Is it really to be mayor? Yeah. You know, are there any eagles in this? I mean, I think there always are. For you to be in that public mm-hmm. space. Um, and then there are some people, of course, at the end, it was more like, well, their profile apparently has been raised versus they have raised, you know, the profile of an issue that wasn't mm-hmm. really getting attention. And so in a way, I think there was some selfishness involved that sort of, really tinted the numbers and what could have been possible because i think there was really a chance for something big to happen for the community versus the outcome i think so as well but again because of the nature of the work i mean i think i just wanted people to come out and Mm -hmm. vote get educated and really learn about all of them so it's really hard to sort of say do this or don't do that it's their choice exactly it's a democracy but again i think the final two represent what 30 percent of the people well, 30% came out to right. vote, a little over 30%. So technically, we can even call that a majority in a way. Well, it's, it's well, is it representative 30% of came the out vote? because really, right. you know, the votes were split all yes. over the place. Yeah. You know, I think what Marty Walsh won with 22% yeah. of the vote, kind of. Um, then we had like 15. 15 and 13. Yeah. yeah. I think Charlotte came in yeah. third with 13%. Pretty much. So it was like, just if she could get like almost 5,000, it's like, you know, that would have pushed. And, and those numbers are so small. When you really think of the grand scheme of things, these are not, that's not a lot, a big number. I'm just disappointed that people are not coming out to yeah. vote. Mainly, you know, we have who we have and we have to deal with that and make sure that they address our issues. But I'm more disappointed that we didn't come out to vote. In light of the evisceration Mm -hmm. of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, you know, this is a right slash privilege, however you want Mm -hmm. to look at it, that they've allowed and that they're steadily trying to take back. Right. They keep they gutted that um, that that um, the Voting Rights Act. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you have that going on and then we don't come out to vote. I know. I'm. You know, it's like, what do we do? Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard to complain or even hard to point fingers. At the same time, I'm thinking the work is ongoing. And I think that's the, you know, that's what's unique about Massfoot is the fact that it's not a seasonal organization where you come out (laughs) only when there's a race because the work continues regardless of whether people are running, whether they're already in office or whether, you know, well, because half the time we do electoral work to yeah. get out the vote, but yeah. the other half of the time we're looking to um, modernize the election laws here in Massachusetts, yeah. which is, which are terrible. Yeah. We don't even have online voter registration. We don't, you know, we had a bill that just came out recently that is very, very weak. Um, it passed in the House last year. It never made it to the floor on the Senate side. Uh-huh. Okay. Came back this year. And it-
It's completely gutted. I mean, it's very watered down, a very watered down version of early voting, which does not include weekends oh, or right, nights, yeah. you know, they have the online voter registration. I think that's awesome. Yeah. But there were other pieces in there, like pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds. Oh, yeah, they took that, that out of the yeah. bill. There was also post-election audits. That's something yeah. that proves the integrity of the voting right. machines. Yeah. You know, we hear all types of reasons why people, people don't vote. Yeah. One of them is because they don't trust the integrity of the voting machine. Yeah. Will my vote really count? Right. Things of that nature. So we're pretty yeah. disappointed with the bill that just I came know. out. So I mean, I think there's so much going on but then at the same time it's there is still going to be a transition mm -hmm. in terms of we going from someone who's been in office for 20 plus years to yes, yes. a brand new person and so i don't know if we're going to repeat that again in terms of having someone in office that long um what you know, I doubt it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I doubt it. But, you know, who knows? Right. Right. It's, it's, this person gets in and they do a magnificent yeah. job. You know, people will probably vote them back in. I can tell you there's a community meeting tomorrow evening at the Boston Teachers Union. And it's um, communities of color, leadership, mm -hmm. activists, organizers. They're going to be talking about a platform. Um which they're posing to the candidates the to two, see the yeah. two final candidates to see where they stand on these issues around education, right. around diversity in, in the police department, fire right. department, yeah. um, about having oversight for the school committee, you know, all, the yeah. BRA, just all these different issues. Yeah, that, I mean, I think there's a lot of leadership posts, you know, where they're going to have a new chief that has to be put in there That's and then right. a, a new, I think, do we need superintendent. superintendent has to come a in. A new so, fire chief. Right. Like, you know, so, so all the yes, 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 these yes. spots. So, I mean, again, I think the education has to be key. And I know you have some great events coming so people can have face-to-face -face time absolutely, with the candidates. Absolutely. We, so the first I, form. Yeah, so we have a form. Uh, MassVote is collaborating with the NAACP, okay. the Urban Let's League, the Deltas, now. Future Boston Alliance. Um, several organizations, uh, civic engagement initiative groups, which include New Neighbors United for a Better East Boston, New England United for Justice, the Boston Workers Alliance, Asian American Resource Workshop. Um, so we have many organizations um, that are um, collaborating with this effort, and it's going to be held on Wednesday, October 23rd. When? At the Reggie Lewis, it's not there. Oh, okay. Because this is, I mean, we've been working with yeah. this, right? So we finally yeah. got the goal, like, last Thursday, it's putting all the route. pieces in place. But it's going to be at the yeah. Reggie Lewis Athletic Center okay. in the gymnasium right. on the 23rd. Which is we very do, easy for people to get to. Yes. Okay. Many modes of transportation. Great. Parking on the street, everything. Do you have... I want to I was gonna do you have child care for those parents to make it so you know we're thinking we're thinking yeah. of doing trans um, having interpreters yep. um, and child care is mm -hmm. certainly something we could put yeah. on the table um, for tomorrow as well as the next night mm -hmm. on October 24th hopefully if we keep our fingers crossed we'll be at Northeastern University okay. with the at-large candidates so that'll be great. That location. so who made the final for the at-large I don't even remember that okay so now you're testing me I am I can tell you the top Did Michelle four. make it Michelle Wu is yeah it? so we had Ayanna Presley top yep. the ticket and Michael Flaherty mm -hmm. Stephen Murphy Michelle Wu Keo yes can't remember his first mm -hmm. name yeah. uh, Anissa can't oh, remember yeah. her last name. Yeah, so we had a lot of new faces yes, running. Yes, I think, yes. and it's so weird when people say this wasn't exciting. I'm like, I don't know what you want. If you want some tap dancing, to <laughs> I happen. know, like, right? There were a lot of new faces, and I think it's great. And that's one of the things I know uh, a lot of different groups, like Emerge and other organization, have worked on in terms of training people who are not your typical sort of like lawyer in training Absolutely. to one for office, who mm -hmm. are from the community, sort of born and bred, and mm -hmm. sort of really passionate about making changes and people were like oh it's really not exciting there was it's no like reason the pipeline, for it to come out yeah. um, the pipeline for change for women of color yeah um that is their focus finding women that are grassroots mm -hmm. as opposed to grass tops right these are your soccer moms and people that really work in, in investing in the community with their children they have their ear closer to the ground. They know what they want to see for their children's future. Yeah. Why are we not recruiting them to run for yeah. office? But again, again, it's how you define like leadership. Like who is mm -hmm. the leader versus like the people who are there, Dan and Dan. Who are the talking pieces yeah. versus the workers? Yes. That's how I'd like to put yeah. it.
And you know, yeah. because a lot of times people talk about things, mm -hmm. but then the action is never Absolutely. close to those that's right. that's conversations. Right. Absolutely. So, but that's the good thing. But also this week, I know you have an exciting one of your signature yes. events coming yes. up. Yes, yes, we have our fall fundraiser, Champions of Democracy. Um, it's being hosted by Lee Halpern and Abby Rockefeller right here in I Cambridge. Cambridge yes. which is great. So we're excited about that. So do people have to make a contribution prior to? Absolutely, okay. so that we can continue the great work great that they the say work. we're doing. Um, um, so let's see. I we're know honoring I saw Michael nice Curry from the NAACP is. and Gloria Bell Motor from Neighbors United for a Better East Boston. Oh, great. So yes, two. we have a fabulous host committee. I saw that. You have Senator Chang on there. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be 6 to 8, seems to be the magic time slot. A I know, <laughs> right? A lot of things. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh my right God. here in so Cambridge. This is great. So people are invited. They can go on the website. Um, www.massvote.org. Okay. Or they can call our Just office call at 617-542-8683. All right. And so, like, how many... Um, I know you probably you did this last year. And mm -hmm. so this is... Is it always in Cambridge? This yes. Okay. We do our fall fundraiser in Cambridge and our spring soiree in Boston. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, easy Across easy. the river, yeah, <laughs> which yeah. is good. So I'm hoping a lot of people will come out and support um, all the great work. I know the forum is another way. So mm -hmm. who's um, moderating the discussion? Right now we have Karen Holmes Ward. Okay. She's been hanging in, the, in, in yeah. there with us as we keep changing the date. Yeah. We were originally doing the at large on the twenty second and the mayoral on the 29th, oh. Both of them at Faneuil Hall. Okay. However, um, with them doing the live televised, the televised the debate. debates, okay. we decided to move it. We didn't want to come up against okay. them. We want yeah. people to have an opportunity to hear from the candidates. So, that's so decided, and she's been hanging in there with us. Okay. Um, not quite sure who um, is moderating the other For the at large one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think she'll make a great um, host because. Oh, she's good. Yeah. She and, can keep the conversation going. And she's in the neighborhood, going. too. She's that's right, right there. That's Chanel, right. That's so. right. That's right. So this will be great. Um, but also, how do you choose your champions? It just depends. You know, working in this field, we run across a lot of people, mm -hmm. right? Different organizations. Yeah. I'm a community activist and a community organizer. Right? I live right in Roxbury yeah. on the Roxbury Dorchester line. I see who's out there doing the work. Mm -hmm. I, I think I have a great advantage because I'm not in my office downtown. Oh, I'm in yeah. the community. I'm right. working alongside a lot of folk and just watching who's doing what type of work. Um, hopefully this will go on for years to come. There are a lot of people that we need to, to honor yeah. that are doing this awesome work, making changes. Yeah, I'm glad you have both sort of... Um you know, I've seen Michael's around, and I think um, I both of them, you know, well known in terms of the work that they're doing. Different absolutely, levels. absolutely. Um, but one of the things also, because you have a youth program as well, it will be great to have youth champions in there as well, yes. because there are so many young people doing great work. And so I think um, we have our Young Civic Leaders mm -hmm. program, and every year they do the Civies Award, oh. in which they actually do their own award okay. show where they honor other youth organizations that are doing work. Oh, that's great. And they give out, we had UTEC, I think, won the overall. UTEC is okay. doing um, the Vote Lowell 17. They're trying to get a municipal election oh, where 17-year-olds okay. can vote. Oh, okay. They're Change doing the okay. yeoman's job there that's with good. their youth. And so they identify other youth. Our young civic leaders pro they do they're our youth ambassadors. Okay. They do exactly what we do in terms of lobbying, mm -hmm. in terms of voter registration, mobilization, yeah, education. Okay. Yeah. They give workshops to other youth groups. They receive workshops. Um, and so they have an opportunity to plan and organize as well their own oh, uh, huge good. event. So that's starting this month because you do have your coordinator lineup, yes. <laughs> which is great. We just news. hired somebody yeah. that's absolutely awesome. Oh, that's we great. had an amazing um, list of candidates Thanks. for that position and came out with our top two. Oh, the youth interviewed and uh, we decided to hire a young man. Okay. He starts tomorrow. Our Young Civic Leaders First program day. starts back up That's tomorrow. Good. They were off the month of September to get back in okay. school. Right. So now we're ready. So October will be the month and then Absolutely. go through December. All so would, um, so the Debates, are, well, not debates. So the debates are you still going to be participating in those, and then Absolutely. the forums are going to be there. Mm -hmm. Anything in between in terms of really educating the community about those two candidates? Like, so, I think I've seen Marty's name more, probably mm -hmm. because he has an office in JP, and then he's sort of like more visible. And I think a lot he's in a union. He's the union mm -hmm. guy. 
And I think the second candidate he's seen was the education John guy. Exactly. Um, exactly. So it's sort of like, I don't know. But hopefully they all, all the issues matter to them versus one well, over um, another. Out of the meeting tomorrow, uh, there will be a hard copy of where they stand on issues. We okay. plan on duplicating that and dropping it doors. So we have, we work with the C, Massachusetts C3 table, mm -hmm. which is completely statewide. It's a coordinating um, organization okay. for all nonprofits that are doing this type of work. We're going to mass produce that document and drop it at doors. Okay. Put it in people's homes. You know, you can only reach a certain amount of people right. on TV, a certain amount of people at the forums, the live forums. Yeah. But if we're knocking doors in a coordinated fashion, we're able to get it into many more homes to yeah. just to give them a side by side. Yeah, I mean, I think the summer there was a lot of advantage because there were so many outdoors activities. Um, so many carnivals, festivals yeah. <laughs> that yes. were going on versus now where I think you know, the weather's changing. And so between now and November, like what kind of strategies do you see uh, people using to sort of get the word out? Outside of our normal door knocking mm -hmm. and phone banking, um, we're looking to host another big event with Northeastern, um, some be just before the voter registration okay. deadline, which is like October 16th. Yeah. Um, we're also, the NAACP is going to host a Greek week oh, where they have yeah. the Greek fraternities. Mm -hmm. um, come out every night and do phone banking. Um, there is going to be a whole host. So, so we collaborate with many with organizations, groups, yeah. Rocks Vote, and that's a, a, a collaboration all into itself, right. where they have many, many people um, coming together to just get people excited. The air has been sucked completely out of the room yeah. after this last election. Yeah. People feel deflated because there is no candidate. Be honest, there's no candidate of can of color right. in this election. Yeah. Uh, some of the excitement's gone. I know. Um, but again, to me, it's just a missed opportunity because, you know, I was looking at those two guys and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm going to do in November because, again, you know, you use different sort of reasoning to sort of get yourself pumped up and go out there because you don't want to not go out there because okay they're not my favorite but regardless one of them will we still have to choose so that's it's right sort of like you have to choose mm -hmm. you know and you still have a choice either way even though we're down to 12 versus the down numbers to two that we from have. the 12 exactly right. so you know um so that's the issue in terms of really getting people energized again because the election still matters and it does to go out. I think once we um, get going and get these candidate guides right. these side by sides going, they hear a couple of debates, mm -hmm. people, and you know, we continue knocking on doors oh, and phone see. banking them and dropping literature to them, hosting several because the candidates have come out and said they're not doing a ton of forums, okay, which. I really don't blame them. They probably did a hundred before the preliminary. Before, so they're kind of like um, webbed out right now. Exactly. So, I mean, I think the website has a lot of great information. Also, people can sign up because I've been receiving your monthly, uh, what do you call uh, it? Roundup. Roundup. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> but I think you send stuff sort of more regularly, especially if something happened at the state house. We do e-actions. Um, yeah. So people can get more information that way. But, you know, if they need help... Um, you know, I don't know which organization is providing rides, for example, on election day. Probably as we get closer to November, those information will be out there. But people can still get involved. Um, I know people can still intern. So Absolutely. even if it's not Mass a job, is ran by interns. Yes. You know? So <laughs> we're staff. always looking for um, yeah. college students that are interested in interning, high school high students, school students yeah. adults that are in between jobs. Mm -hmm. We're always looking to build our volunteer base. And come out and support. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the website has every all the information that people need. And then um, in between, I think you had some great pictures on there about uh, the young people who may have been involved in the past. So then they can get um, information about your leadership program, your civic engagement. Um, exactly. And of course, I don't know if you're looking for more partners or you do have a... That's one of our, oh that's, my gosh. yeah. That's so Sherrod that's Chase, Sherrod graduated. Oh. He said, they did an amazing interview. Oh, right. I am so proud of my young people. Oh, that's great. You know what? This is a good, yeah, I may close with this. Um, that clip will be great to sort of hear their view. So this was at the office? Yes. <laughs> they they did this in. one, they so did. that's great. All right, so, I mean, I think there's a lot of information. I'm hoping people will call the office, yes. talk to you, um, and whatever's going on at the State House to keep, a, 
keep us posted. And Absolutely. again, Thursday is an opportunity yes. for people to support yes, Mass Vote. Yes, please come out. Right here in Cambridge, wherever mm-hmm. they are, they can come to Cambridge and, Absolutely. and support the work. Um, and so, um, so whether they can volunteer, make a donation, any Intern, kind of support. everything. Spread the word. Spread get the people word. excited. And if they need materials, for example, they can get We'll have those brochures available. And we do have materials in our office around different... To um, get those? Okay. Yes. Alrighty. So I'm going to close with the clip. Okay. And I'm hoping you'll come back. I hope you'll invite <laughs> so me back this again. This is the first of many to come.